Hello and welcome back to my channel. This stack here is pretty tall because it has 21 or 22 puzzles. I think I only wanted to pick out 21, but I have a feeling that there are 22 here. This stack represents my to-do pile for the month of December. Now, I always have new puzzles coming in and sometimes something takes precedence over something that's already in order. But for now, these are the ones that I have picked out. These puzzles aren't in any particular order. They are loosely based by box size and a little bit by manufacturer, but it's just a tall stack. A tall stack that's eventually going to get smaller because I'm about to show you my December puzzle goals. Now, before we go on to my December puzzle goals, we'll talk a wee bit about November. For November, I think I had 17 puzzles in my goal list for November, but I got 12 done. And that video is processing right now as we speak. I'm just waiting for it to render on YouTube and then it will be posted quite naturally before this video is posted. But now I have even more puzzles lined up than I did for last month, like I said, to the tune of 21 or 22. And there's a kind of a reason for this number. My real goal is 17 puzzles. Why? Because I'm currently at 183 puzzles. So if I get 17 done, excuse me, I am at 133 puzzles. If I get 17 done, I will end the year on a round number of 150. So my goal is to at least get to 150 for 2023. And if I can bypass that and get to 151 or 152 or 153, even better. But I'm not going to put undue pressure on myself. Um, I've had a med change during the month of November and the chemicals in my brain are kind of firing in the wrong way. So my distraction is up here. I mean, I am doing like 17 different things at the same time because my attention is really, really shattered. So I don't know if I'm going to reach this goal, but if I do, great. If I don't, there's always next month or the month after or the month after or the month after or the month after or the month after. Or the month after or the month. Oh, anyway, back to this. So let's look at this first one. This color story, which is colorful teacups, is a 750 piece puzzle by Seiko. My friend Hope sent me this puzzle. She knows I love gradients. She loves tea. As a matter of fact, I have another tea puzzle in, in the stash, actually. And be, with it being 750 and being a gradient puzzle, I think I'll be able to get this done in a good day's time. So I'm looking forward to starting that one. Colorful teacups. And if I can find the name of the artist on any of these, I'll let you know. And lo and behold, this is a Lars Stewart puzzle. Lars Stewart is the husband of Amy Stewart, and you're about to see a couple of her puzzles in this video. So this is Colorful Teacups. Let me just make a place for these. Now, I mentioned in my last video, my November wrap-up video for Jigsaw Puzzles, that Steve Reed is one of my favorite illustrators, especially when it comes to his cats. So I have this one by him. This is cat, uh, Curiosity Shop Cats, and the, I had to look at the way it's taped. I did buy this secondhand. There's a group on Facebook. It's like Puzzles Buy, Sell, Trade, and Chat Group. I think that's the name of it. So whenever I see certain puzzles, I, I put in for them. And if I can get them, I do. So this one here, this Curiosity Shop Cat, is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to doing it. Again, the artist is Steve Reed, 750 pieces. So my first two puzzles that I'm showing you are 750 piece puzzles. So let's move on to a couple of 1,000 piece puzzles. Now, the next two puzzles that I'm going to show you are, are very, very similar in some ways, but yet different in other ways. So because of some of the similarities, I will do one during the first half of December and then the other in the second half of December. And I'll show you them both right now, and then we'll look at both of them. They're both called Rustic Lodge. So I'm just showing you both. So let's look at the first one. I'm pretty sure that this is called Cabin Retreat. It's Rustic Lodge, and we're guessing that it's Cabin Retreat, and it's a Dominic Davison jigsaw puzzle. And it's a 1,000-piece puzzle. I think I bought this back in August, so I want to work on it during the month of December. 
I thought that this would be a nice puzzle because there's snow-capped mountains in the back and there's a fire burning. So it makes me think of those skiing trips I went on when I was younger and going to the ski lodge and sitting down sipping hot chocolate. So that's what I thought of when I saw that fire. The other Rustic Lodge puzzle is actually called Cozy Fire. It's obviously Do uh, another Dominic Davison because it's the same artist. Now, again, we have the snow-capped mountains in the background and we have a gentle fire, not as vivid as the fire in the other one. And one of the similarities of these puzzles are the antlers on top, one brown, one green. But I thought I would do both of these in December and like I said, split them between the first half and the second half of the month. So we'll see how that goes. Everything is subject to change. Life never is static for me. Then remember I showed you a Lars Stewart puzzle. Well, one of my favorite illustrators is Amy Stewart. This is Cookies and Classic, a 1000 piece Buffalo puzzle. Now I have tons of her puzzles, maybe like 35 or 36. I love them. This is a winter themed puzzle with some Christmas cookies and some cookies that you would have that have you would have during the month of December. There's some warm mittens right here. And let's see what else. Um, just the various shaped cookies, the stars and with the sprinkles and all of that good stuff. So I got this one, I think in September, but I'm looking forward to doing it in December. This one here, it's also an Amy Stewart. I believe this is Amy. Yes. Winter Reading Nook. I wanted this puzzle so bad, and I think the first time I went after it, it was out of stock, but it came back in stock. It's a winter puzzle. I think I have four or five winter puzzles lined up, and this is one of them. I can't wait to get to this. I'm currently working on a Seiko puzzle right now, and then I, which is 1,000 pieces. And I think after that, I will do a 500 piece puzzle, and then I will get to this. So if you're watching this video during the first week of December, expect to see the video for this puzzle soon. Winter Reading Nook. I'm in love with this puzzle. I'm so in love with this puzzle. I mean, you see the two cats right there, a ginger cat and a, a cat. I, 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 I don't want to say calico, but two cats right there. And it's just one of my favorite il illustrations in jigsaw puzzles. Now, I mentioned, and I have mentioned multiple times on this channel, how much I love gradient puzzles. So I have one. And this one is from Masterpieces. And it's called Sun Succulents. In fact, when I put this in my big stack that I have right here beside me, I went to put this in my December read, excuse me, December puzzle goals, and I hadn't logged this one. So this was not logged. So I thought that I had 400. Let's see. Let's close this. I thought I had 430 jigsaw puzzles, but apparently I have 431 because somehow I got this puzzle in the last week, but I forgot to log it. So this masterpieces what puzzle is 550 pieces. And you'll notice in this video, by the way, that I'm going to show you a handful of 500, this 550 and the two 750 piece puzzles because I want to get more puzzles done during the month of December than I got done in November. And because I want to get more puzzles done by quantity, I'm lowering some of my piece count size. So I'm gonna be doing that one. Speaking of lowering my piece count size, my next puzzle that I'm showing you is a 500 piece puzzle by Cobble Hill. Look at all those kittens. Let's get the name of it in the Illustrator. It's called Basket Case. And the it's uh, Brault, Brault's the Greenwich Workshop. Never heard of that person or workshop before in my life, but it's a Cobble Hill puzzle. I have become quite fond of Cobble Hill puzzles, even though most of their puzzles are random cut, but I've gotten adjusted to it and I'm in love with it. And I can't wait to do this one. How many kittens here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight beautiful kittens. 500 pieces so this will what I hope to do is a 1,000 piece then a 500 a 1,000 piece then a 500 a 1,000 piece then a 750 so we'll see if I work like that 
I decided to pull this out. This was not in my original stack because I had made my December list a few weeks ago. But I decided to pull this Shelly Davies puzzle out and I'm trying to find, okay. Vintage Art Supplies. I love Shelly Davies. Shelly Davies does the um, Cobble Hill Rainbow Series. Blue, green, red, orange, yellow, purple, and pink, I believe, which I've done all of those. And so she also did black and white and she did the succulent rain, I mean, a rainbow one. And then there's even the four elements, water, air, water, air, I want to name them, but I can't. So I am always on the lookout for Shelly Davies puzzles. So I know that in the month of November, I did an art, like it was called Coloring Days by Amy Stewart. So there's going to be some similarities in the things that are in this puzzle, in the items, but I, I'm looking forward to it. There's pencils, there's paints, there's even a pool ball, uh, if, if you want to play pool, um, pastels, and erases, crayons, you name it. So I'm looking forward to doing this. Now it's a Cobble Hill, no doubt, random cut, so I do not expect it to be easy, but I'm excited to do it. Then I have a quick 500 piece, I say quick, because I think it will be, and it's a Charles Wysocki puzzle called Cocoa Break at the Cotton, nope, let's say that again, Cocoa Break at the Copperfields, and it's one of maybe four or five puzzles I have for December with snow. So I'm looking forward to doing this one. I love Charles Wysocki. I think I've already, no, I haven't shown you my, oh, I've got two more Charles Wysocki puzzles right in order, but this one is 500 pieces. I grabbed it and I'm looking forward to doing it. Speaking of Charles Wysocki, my next two puzzles are Charles Wysocki puzzles and they are heavily snow puzzles and this one is Hickory Haven Canal. I'm going to give myself two or three days for this one because I think that snow is going to take me for a ride but I'm looking forward to doing this. Now I had two of these. I had this by another brand. I can't quite remember the brand maybe Mil Milton Bradley. So I sent that one to my friend Hope and I kept this one. I did not realize that I had this when I bought the I had the previous version when I bought this, but I kept the Buffalo brand and I'm looking forward to doing it and there you have it. My next Charles Wysocki puzzle, again a lot of snow. It's called Cider Brooks Farm. It's a 1000 piece puzzle and Hopefully by now you are familiar with me in this channel and you're going to hear some names quite a bit. You're going to hear Charles Wysocki. You're going to hear Amy Stewart. You're going to hear other names like Steve Reed. And there are others like Colin Thompson. So Shelly Davies. So when I like a certain illustrator, I try to get as much of their work as I can. In fact, I think I'm beginning to start to collect some series when it comes to the Ibu puzzles, um, which I'm going to show you soon. Now, this is a Dr. Seuss puzzle that is already up on this channel. I finished this uh, Saturday or Friday, Friday or Saturday. Anyway, this is a Dr. Seuss puzzle and it's already done, but I'm putting it in this video because it's part of my December queue. I did this puzzle on December 2nd, so I guess Saturday I finished it yesterday. So this Dr. Seuss puzzle has nine book covers, and all I did is, as I went through the trays, I just looked for pieces of the individual covers, and I started, and I went left to right. This one, then this one, then this one, all the way down. So when you see the video, the video only has 12 or 13 clips in it because I just showed one book cover at a time as I completed this puzzle. The next one, I'm going to call it a gradient puzzle, and it's called Comfortable Rainbow, another Cobble Hill puzzle, which I think this is going to make my third Cobble Hill puzzle that I want to work on for the month of December. And for the for all intents and purposes, it is kind of a gradient because you have the, the, the range of colors. So I think this puzzle will be rather doable. Might be some challenges, but obviously because of the quilts, because it's, it's rainbow quilts, but the reason that I got this puzzle is I have been binge watching older shows. I binge watched Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, Little House on the Prairie, and now I am more than two thirds way through binge watching 
the Waltons. Now these are shows in series that I have seen before, but I started them from the beginning and I'm watching them all the way through. So one of the bigger things in the Waltons is quilting is part of their heritage, what they pass on to their daughters. And so I, I love the idea of the quilts. And even Dr. Quinn had an episode where they did a quilt. So that's the reason that I got this puzzle. And another rainbow gradient puzzle for you. This one here is called um, Floral Reflections. And the artist, it just says, is Olina. And I'm looking forward to doing this. I'm glad it's only 500 pieces because I think it will be kind of a challenge. But it's a Ravensburger, so I expect it to be a grid cut puzzle. But who knows? Time will tell. Now, this box is empty. Why? Because I'm about halfway to, to two-thirds done with it over there. And you're not going to see even what I'm pointing to because I'm going to trim the video a little bit. But this one is called Reading and Relaxing. You have a woman reading in the bathtub, and at first I thought there were two cats, and then I thought there were three cats, but as I started assembling the puzzle, I realized there are four cats. You can't go wrong with cats in a jigsaw puzzle when it comes to me. And then the fact that it's called reading and relaxing, I mean, I love to read. My channel name is Robin Loves Reading, and I, I love that, and I love the idea that this puzzle is the way that it is. So I'm looking forward to doing that, uh, finishing this one. Now, I mentioned tea earlier because I have the colorful teacups, but I, now I'm showing you Tea Party. It's a round puzzle, and this is Monica Forsberg. And I, like I said, I'm going to start collating a list of the Ebo puzzle designers because I'm starting to do a lot of Ebo puzzles in my stash of 52 Ebo puzzles. And I know I've seen the name Monica Forsberg, but I don't quite know what puzzles are hers, so I think I just want to do a little research and find out. So this is a round puzzle, as you can see, and I'm looking forward to doing it. My This puzzle and the next two ones that I'm going to show you are 500-piece puzzles. And as I mentioned, I'm going to intersperse 1,000 with 500 and so forth. Now, what I did for this is I just had my son in my other room reach up and get me three 500-piece puzzles that were in easy at easy reach for him. He's over six foot tall. So he reached up and he grabbed three 500s. So he grabbed this one for me. And this one is called Mushrooms Upside Down. This is Mushrooms and Butterflies. It's an Ibu puzzle. I think this one came from Hope. Hope, if it came from you, let me know in the comments. I'm pretty sure it did. So this is Mushrooms and Butterflies, another round jigsaw puzzle. This art artist is Fumia Tanaka. She's from Brooklyn. So that's this one here. And then I have another 1,000 piece, and I think this, one of these is from Hope, one of these is from a Facebook group, and I'm getting confused as to where I got this. This is called 100 Great Words. So I thought this would be fun. I mean, 100 words could be a challenge, especially because the words are upside down, right side up, sideways, and left and right, and so forth and so on. But I think if I read the words and grab the pieces that have the words, I don't know. We'll see. You'll see when you see the video. Then I have another winter puzzle. This I got from the White Mountain. By, uh, I think they had, it, it was buy three, get one free or some sale for Black Friday. So I got this one called Winter Games. Now it's a thousand pieces and there's a lot of snow and it's my fourth or fifth puzzle with snow. Maybe my third or fourth puzzle with snow. So there's a lot of snow in this puzzle. I don't know how this one is going to go. So I kind of want to work on this earlier in the month in, ca in case it takes me a few days. I don't want to save this to the end of the month and then take three or four days to do it. So I think I will work on this simultaneously with a 500 piece puzzle. So that's winter reading games. Now, I mean, not winter reading games. Winter... Let me get this. Winter Games, but I'm looking for the artist. Trevor Mitchell. I, I've never heard of Trevor Mitchell before, but it's from White Mountain. I, I don't know if Amazon has it, but if they do, I'll try to give you a link. But I got it from the White Mountain website. Two more puzzles in my stash. I haven't counted yet, but we have this Ravensburger puzzle. Now, this one is called 
um, A Pray All Day by Nancy Wernerschbach. Okay, this A Pray All Day puzzle is a nice winter puzzle that I did not request, but the person that was sending me the next puzzle that I'm going to show you sent me the wrong one. But I'm thinking, hey, you know, it's that time of year. Why not do it, right? So I, I asked her to go ahead and send me the one that I requested. I, I had already paid for the one that I had requested, so I paid again, which covered the cost of this one. So this is a pray all day. Nancy, like I said, it's Nancy Warnersbrock. Yeah, Warnersbrock. And last but not least... This is another one from Olga. We just saw an Olga puzzle. I don't remember which one was Olga. This is the one that I did request. It's called Cozy Bathroom. It reminds me of another cozy puzzle by a different artist, but this is Cozy Bathroom, and I'm really looking forward to doing it. I'm glad it's a 500-piece puzzle, and I don't know what the breakdown of 500 versus 1,000, but I've got a little bit more 500 in my stash for a to-do pile than I usually do in order to be able to, like I said, meet that goal of getting to 150. If I get past 150, that would be great. But if I don't, again, no pressure, but there you have it. That is my December puzzle goals video. Now I just have to do a little bit of editing and I will get this video up. Thank you for watching.